So let me just get straight to the point. The Houston Rockets just got obliviated by the Los Angeles Lakers, led by one LeBron, Ramon, James, in his 17th season, who is still looking like the best player on both ends of the floor whenever he chooses to do so. Okay, and Anthony Davis, what can I say about him? He totally dominated, dismantled what was left of the Houston Rockets. And speaking of the Houston Rockets, who just got beat four games to one against the Lakers, one can only think, where in the hell do they go from here? Because I'm going to tell you something, y'all, and I'm not going to bullshit y'all because you know this is your main man, E. Thriller, a.k.a. Ham Rothstein. But you know how I play. I don't bullshit or sugarcoat anything on this fucking channel. So even though I love James Harden, I love him. And even though I like Russell Westbrook and his mentality as far as playing every single play all out. Those two as a dynamic duo isn't going to cut the mustard. This shit ain't going to work. I kid you not, this shit is not going to work, especially when you are coached by a guy who is on his, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, hell, nine, tenth coaching job, who has yet to advance to win an NBA title, hell, let alone even make it to the finals. I'm talking about one and the only Mike Dan Tony, because this man lives and dies by the small ball philosophy. And why, why, for the life of me, would he feel like it would be okay to get rid of size and athleticism, a guy that can defend and roam and do everything on both ends of the forehead times, and Clint Capella by catching alley-oops from James Harden, by deflecting and altering shots on defense, why would Coach Dan Tony think it would be wise to get rid of the only big man that you had? Why? Why? Didn't it come back to bite you in the ass this series? Because, make no mistake about it, the Houston Rockets, even though we all knew that they were not the better team than, all, than better than the Los Angeles Lakers was what I meant to say. We all knew that. But at the same time, you can't come in and just expect to be able to play with an Anthony Davis who is 6'10", 245 pounds, y'all. Guard, but he's trapped in a big's body. That's what he is. And Anthony Davis, outside of game one, did what I told y'all he should do. I told him I didn't want to see any more lunch and the long three-pointers and the jump shots and whatnot. I just wanted to see... A.D., big ass, go down low and bang. Say it with me. Bang. B-A-N-G. I also expected the same thing for LeBron, Ramon, James to do as well because he's 6'8", 250, 260. The fastest man on the court, the strongest man on the court, and the biggest. All he had to do was go down low and bang. Quit shooting the cute jump shots. Quit bailing the Houston Rockets defense out because we all know that they lack girth and size down low. And punish them. Just punish them. And that's exactly what the Lakers did. And lo and behold, Frank Vogel. Let's give him a round of a fucking applause because finally, finally, he made the correct coaching adjustment by doing what? Inserting Markeith Morris in at the four. And sliding AD big ass to the five. Because anybody with common sense, basketball common sense that is, knows that the Lakers are more comfortable. They're more dangerous. They're more potent when Anthony Davis is playing the five. Why? Because it stretches the floor out. Because he's a big that can shoot. He is also a big that is so quick for other bigs to guard out on the perimeter that he could just blow right by him with that left hand and dunk it. OK, he's that potent. And then you got Kuzma and Morris and LeBron and, you know, J.R. Smith or Alex Caruso or Danny Green all out on the floor with the best passer, passer rather, 
the NBA has ever seen. And I'm saying it with my fucking chest out, y'all. I'm not backing down from it one bit. I know Magic had the flair and Steve Nash and Jason Kidd had the vision. But damn it, they not LeBron James. They are not LeBron James. And speaking of LeBron James, isn't it kind of incredible that the moment that this guy got some help, some fucking help, legitimate help, some perimeter shooting, he's back in the Western Conference Finals. For the first time, now I shouldn't say back, but he's back in contention to win another championship. Now, if that does not epitomize greatness, I don't know what does. Because if you let the media tell it, when he pulled that groin against the Golden State Warriors, who I cannot fucking stand. When he pulled his groin last year on Christmas Day, people wrote LeBron off. They said he was washed up. He's not the same. He's this, he's that. He doesn't play defense. He's not being a great leader. Well, if you give the guy some help, the man can work wonders, okay? He can make mud out of a mud wheel, okay? Okay, he can do whatever. Just give him some fucking help in some perimeter shooting, not playmakers, Magic Irvin Johnson, but some perimeter shootings, shooters in a legitimate all-star on his side. And that man is going to at least get you to the conference finals, no matter the conference. No matter the conference. And he's not going to flame out like a Giannis Antetokounmpo whose game is super limited, who can only do one thing and one thing only, and that is going down low and banging, getting to the basket with those Euro steps. At some point in time, he's going to have to learn how to shoot a jumper. And the same goes for Russell Westbrook to stay on top. Because the Houston Rockets, as far as I'm concerned, was not as good as they were in the regular season. And it really wasn't because of James Harden, who did stink it up last game. But it was because of his running mate, Russell Westbrook. What in the hell happened? I mean, would you show up? Would you please show up? And can you stop turning the ball over like it's going out of fucking style? You know, you're just handing out like a lady at fucking Kroger's just handing out coupons and samples. This is how Russell Westbrook was turning the damn ball over, y'all. The man only knows one way and one way only. It's one pace, full speed. Sometimes he just needs to slow down, think about what he's going to do before he tries to go out there and execute it by going heads up. He has to learn, but I mean, in year what, 14, 13? Do you really think it's going to happen anytime soon? Because I just don't see it, man. And you know what else I don't see? This little experiment that Daryl Morey and, and Fertitta and, I, and Coach Mike D'Antoni wanted to experiment with and explore with the small ball basketball with the analytics and shit like that. Maybe, just maybe, it's time for y'all to blow it up in Houston. I hate to say it, but I'm going to keep it a buck. I would get rid of Daryl Morey first. And those goddamn analytics and all the analytic people that he surrounds himself with in the game of basketball, he has to go. Russell Westbrook, as long as James Harden is in Houston, Russell Westbrook can't play with him. He cannot play with him because, for one, he is ball dominant, just like James Harden. And two, he cannot make a catch and shoot jump shot, period. I mean, it's just that fucking simple. And I let him play me, man. I let him play. Why? Why do I always do this when it comes to Houston? Because I know better. I fucking know better. I should have known that they were going to flame out because their best two players and head coach has a history of flaming out. You know, they have a history of coming up small, choking, playing horribly. Russell Westbrook was the worst this series, the absolute worst. And then I got to throw Dan Tony in there because at one point you say, you know what, this shit ain't working. Let me try something else. Tyson Chandler, bring your old ass off the bench. You have to try something. And poor P.J. Tucker, because I feel bad for him the most. Because the guy is only 6'5", about 235 smoking wet. And you asking this man to bang with JaVale McGee. 
when he did play. Bang with a Dwight Howard. And then turn around when he think that's over. Come down and guard AD. A man who can go down low and bang. And then extend and drop his ass off on the perimeter. And then, oh, by the way, you want me to switch and guard LeBron too? I mean, what more did P.J. Tucker have to do as a player on the offensive end and the defensive end? And don't even get me started about how that man didn't make a defensive player team, all team defense. Like, what the fuck is going on? What the fuck is going on out here? But I digress. I just feel so bad for P.J. Tucker, man, because I can honestly say I don't know about the other guys, but maybe Russell Westbrook, even though he doesn't go about it the right way all of the time. That's his knock. But I know P.J. Tucker, win, lose, or draw, come hell or high water, he is going to leave it all out on the floor and play hard till the fucking whistle blows. He's going to take charges. He's going to get offense rebounds and putbacks, hit spot-up threes in the corner, set move, I mean picks and moving screen. It don't even matter. He's going to do it all for you. I know he's going to bring it, but I don't know that about James Harden. I mean, can a real James Harden please stand up? Because I have defended this man time and time again. I've been called an idiot. I've been ridiculed because I remember last year when I was doing the uh, 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 Just Another Podcast with Slum Brady. Shout out to you. When I was doing all that, I was berating for James Harden as the best player in the NBA over LeBron James because at the time... LeBron wasn't LeBron. LeBron was hurt. LeBron missed, what, 28 to 29 games last season. And I'm looking at Giannis Antetokounmpo and James Harden and Kevin Durant and all those other guys that were playing at the time, and I said James Harden was playing at a level I have not seen before. He was scoring at a clip that only the likes of Wilt and Jeffrey, when I say Jeffrey, I mean the GOAT, Michael Jordan, Kobe Bean Bryant, the other GOAT, and Tracy McGrady. Just to name a few, and Allen Iverson. Those are the guys, when I think about scoring and Kevin Durant, I think of those guys. Guys that are unstoppable. Hell, I can even throw Gilbert Arenas in there. And if you don't remember Agent Zero, (laughs) go to YouTube and watch some games. Not clips. Watch full games. But I digress on that topic. But when is James Harden going to show up? When it matters most. And I even got a better question for myself and for everybody else that's listening to this video, and I really appreciate it. Because I know I can be a tad bit long-winded when I am ranting. But I just got to ask this question. Is it time for the Houston Rockets and that franchise and that fan base to get rid of James Harden? Because what more can he do for you? Because an argument could be made that this was his best opportunity to win an NBA title this year. You know, with the whole coronavirus thing and people, you know, being on break and five months in between the season and things of that nature. With so much uncertainty with how Anthony Davis and LeBron were going to mesh and LeBron is in year 17 and Anthony Davis hasn't been on a big stage yet in the playoffs. And then you couple that with the Clippers who were still trying to figure things out, who has had a lot of injuries and not a lot of unnecessary uh, 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 vacancies and people going to strip clubs and shit like that in a bubble. This was your best opportunity to win an NBA title, James Harden. This was your best chance. And to be honest with you, I think this was your last chance. Because I just don't see it. Because guess what? The Dallas Mavericks are coming. The Denver Nuggets ain't going no fucking where. As a matter of fact, they're taking the Clippers to the brink, I believe, to what? Game six tomorrow? Okay? They not going nowhere. The Portland Trailblazers are not going anywhere. The Phoenix Suns are coming. The Memphis Grizzlies are coming. The Utah Jazz. Did you see what Donovan Mitchell did? Did you see that display of the repertoire that he put on in the NBA bubble? Did you see that, man? He not going nowhere. The Phoenix Suns and Devin Booker, who I got to give credit to, who I want to apologize to also, because I said that Russell Westbrook was better than him. And boy, was I a fucking idiot. Because Devin Booker is the truth, y'all. He's the truth. But when is James Harden going to ever get over the hump? I don't think it's going to happen. 
And I'll take it a step further. The only way it will happen is if he go get with a Batman. I'm talking about a legitimate superstar. Now, who that is, I don't know. The man had Dwight Hobber before. He's played with Kevin Durant before. He's played with Chris Paul, who they scapegoated, you know. He's played with Carmelo Anthony. And now he's playing with Russell Westbrook. And they still can't get it done. The facts are facts. I can't refute, rebuttal, dispute any of it. I just got to call a spade a spade, man. I do not think James Harden will ever win an NBA championship. And the Houston Rockets are in a world of trouble because they have to start from scratch. This year, this team has been built from the ground up to play all guards and forwards because you got rid of so many intricate pieces that went well with that puzzle, but you guys just weren't either patient enough or guys just didn't get along. But one thing I know is Dan Tony. If this man gets fired and gets hired at another job, that's white privilege at its finest, y'all, because Mark Jackson deserves to get another head coaching job. Just to name a few. Okay? But I think it's just time for Houston to blow it up, man. And that's basically what I had to say in conclusion. I know this was a long, long video, and I apologize. But once again, I want to thank everybody for watching this video. Do me a huge favor. Hit that like button. Hit that share button. And share it with your friends and family. Sub to the channel if you haven't already do did so. It goes a long way. And once again, this is your boy E-Thriller. And just like that, poof, I'm gone. Holla.